the judiciary Uganda. Well, I commend the judiciary. Uh, the late Ben Chunoka did a lot to contribute to a good profile of a judiciary in a try, even un, particularly under most trying periods. Uh, but uh, it can be an institution which should be depended upon in the hardest of times. I think it stands uh, tall in that category. The others in other countries uh, and also in this country, but I think it stands very tall. Uh, in, in that regard, and I commend the judiciary so many years afterwards to recognize that uh, fact and to do something in memory and honor of Benedict Jonoka, the first Ugandan chief justice in this country. Uh, you will find something which makes him stand up tall, first as a lawyer. I would even say, before he became a lawyer, uh, he struggled uh, and uh, distinguished himself as a good servant. That is why one lawyer from the United States who had come to uh, plead for the Bataka found him deserving to be encouraged to, to, take, to, to, to go to school again and uh, take law. He was then uh, uh, acting in the library of the High Court, and this lawyer found him very engaged, uh, very uh, cooperative, and knowledgeable, and very helpful. So he asked him about his future, and Ben said, I'm just working here. <laughs> And this man said, no, you should be a lawyer. <laughs> you have all what it takes to make a good lawyer. So he was already distinguished. He brought in the, the base of the Democratic Party uh, nationally and also attracted many elites from all walks of life, uh, from various professions, uh, denominations. Uh, it was during his time that you had outstanding uh, Protestants, for instance, joined the party. They were not forbidden before, but I think in him they found uh, somebody worth following. People like the late Professor Sente Zakajubi, Stanley Bemba, Enokamulida, and so many others. Uh, and this boosted the party uh, beyond all expectations. He. Uh, got interest in uh, the fate of many other people who were in prison uh, falsely. When in prison, some of them without charge, some of them uh, on bail, which was uh, on, on remand, which was unending, uh, not only in Guzida, but even as far away as Guru. Uh, then, uh, as you pray, no better, the, he was interested uh, in ending uh, uh, in, uh, the, the, the subjugation of the judiciary uh, to the whims of the uh, leaders in the government. So he wanted to, to be really independent. So he moved on all those fronts. Uh, and uh, in the end, I think that is, how to, that is what cost his, his life. Uh, because uh, finally, as you know, he entertained a, a habeas corpus application uh, by uh, British expatriate working for Kachira Sugar Works, uh, an application which 
other judges feared to to attend to. Uh, all, all of them were, most of these judges were, were, were experts themselves, <laughs> including <laughs> mainly even British. But they feared to, to do it because they knew that this person had been uh, detained on the instructions, or at least with the concurrence. What followed was a telephone call from the then uh, Minister of uh, Justice, the late uh, Chivedi, uh, raising the issue of what had he done, and uh, the president, that is Idi Amin, was he inquiring about that, and uh, would he go and uh, tell him, have a dis meet him? And Ben said, according to protocol, if a minister or whatever it is wants to, to, to discuss officially an issue, the Chief Justice should come to the chamber of the Chief Justice and discuss the matter. And uh, that, uh, I think, further annoyed Idi Amin, and Idi Amin uh, called Ben on telephone and they inquired about the judgment. James Bernie said yes, I, I passed the judgment, but it is in the file, it is in the chambers. We can get it from there. He called me the following day. He called me uh, in the morning and I was uh, in the office because had, we are trying to revive the party. <laughs> I resumed my work, so he called me in the morning and I went to his chambers. When I got there, I found him uh, clearing his desk. He was clearing his desk and uh, we were served tea together and he told me uh, I'm no longer Chief Justice. He believed that from that conversation, from that, the conversation he had had with the, with the with 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 the with the president, with the president. Uh, he believed that he would be he would no longer continue. He would be dis he would be dismissed, or he would find it impossible to continue. And he had uh, assembled all his uh, titles, land titles for his land, his property. He had put them. He had assembled them together, and he, he gave them to me to keep. He gave them to yes. that morning. Yes, he entrusted them to me. In his chambers. Yes, and he said, you, you keep, I don't care, I don't want to know where you keep them, but you take them away, and uh, if the worst happens, you will give them to my wife afterwards. He, he believed that uh, the, the day had come. It was not uh, just that event. For some time, there were signs that uh, Idi Amin was not comfortable with him. First of all, he, uh, he, there was a time when he made a speech uh, in Rukunjiri. Uh, that was after Idi Amin had uh, decreed to expel non-Africans, Asians and so on, expatriates. And uh, Ben was not in agreement with that order of summary expelling people. And uh, Idi Amin was annoyed about that, so he expressed himself about it. When Miss Chonoka called me, the wife, of the Bene Chonoka telephoned me and uh, invited me to a place that is the Chief Justice's residence. That her husband had been picked up from the chambers. But, uh, people came and they, they, they grabbed him from the chambers. They took him to Machindi.
and he was uh, eventually taken to Idi Amin, who shot him. <laughs> 